This is the new Cadillac Escalade and it's a little bit like Messier 87. You don't know the reference. It's the biggest black hole in the galaxy. In fact, this car is so huge, I'm sure it has its own gravitational pull. Oh my gosh. Yeah, in this video, I'm gonna talk you through the exterior design, the interior, see what's good and what's not good about it. And of course, I'm gonna take it for a drive. Anyway, I'm my Watson. And you're watching. Car wow. Buying a new car? Then head to Car Wow and my team will help you find your next car at a fair price. Car Wow, your one stop car buying comparison site. Let's start off this video by talking about the design of the Cadillac Escalade. So at the front, it is big. At the side, it's very long. Very long. In fact, I'm going to measure it out now. So it's one meter, two meter, three meter, four meter, five meter almost six meters long though this is the long wheelbase version meanwhile at the back it's it's very wide it's also very chromey isn't it that's because it's the luxury model you can get a sport model which isn't quite so in your face now price starts from over seventy thousand dollars rising to over a hundred thousand dollars however if you want one in the uk you're gonna have to pay for shipping import tax registration a warranty and if you want to find out how much this one here that I have is through Clive Sutton, the importer, I'll put a link to his website in the description. Go check that out. Here in the front, the Cadillac is big. It's big. Loads of room. There's quite a distance between you and the front passenger. You've got this huge center console which separates you. This massive screen bank here and it's sort of curved as well. Remember when like TVs were curved, it was like a phase. Well, Cadillac have just caught up to that trend now that everyone else has moved on. So the infotainment system itself is pretty decent. It's very easy to control and navigate through. You can use it as a touchscreen or you can control it with this swivel wheel. And of course it's got Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. The digital driver's display doesn't seem to come on unless I actually start the engine. So bear with me. I don't know if it's an American thing or a car thing or whether it's a me thing. There we go. So you can scroll through different menus and settings and stuff like that but one thing that I find a bit weird is the rev count it's like this like straight line bar I don't like that I don't like that at all I'm gonna turn that off there we go I do like the fact that you have physical buttons for the climate control that is nice and the quality in here is is pretty decent as well it's not up to the standards of a BMW X7 though in fact if you want to see my full in-depth video review of that car click on the pop-out banner up there or follow the link in the description but there is lots of storage just yeah, storage down here there's a space here for your mobile phone though i'm not sure it'll fit my foldy phone oh, i guess it will just about like that also under here there's some storage with some usb ports and down here a big size glove box i bet you can fit a 45 in there seats are comfy and very large very large yeah, it's all right yes it's all right and there's this thing here which they seem to have in american vehicles quite a lot that's for your brake on your trailer here in the middle row of the escalade there is plenty of room now you can get it with three seats here or in this case two individual chairs because this one is a seven seater version lots of knee room headroom's really good look you've got the armrests like that and obviously i can recline my seat and i can slide it like that all very good like this as well big windows and they go all the way down also the quality here in the middle row is the same as in the front which is a good thing they haven't cheaped out back here speaking of which look we've got this big screen here there's another one for the other middle passenger and you can connect your phone to it to run android auto off it also look we've got hmi inputs for it so you could run your playstation 5 off it if you can get your hands on one and there's some cup holders here as well we've got the climate control system it's all pretty good now i'm going to jump into the back row now show you how you do it so I'm just pull this he says it's that easy <laughs> well it is easy if you don't cock it up like i just did <laughs> i'm gonna pull this back ah. see how much room i've got back here look at this decent headroom it's comfy i'm not sitting too close to the floor there's three seats across here as well i'm liking that oh, it's a bit dark isn't it 
Um, okay, right, I'll just open the, the sun blind. Yeah, might be able to see a bit more. Because back here you have decent amount of storage as well. Look, we've got a cup holder there, little tray for your mobile phone. There's also the all important USB C there for charging your phone. Ah, it's a big, practical, comfy family wagon, isn't it? Let's talk about the engine. So there's two to choose from. One is a three litre straight six diesel, which you don't want because you want this one. It's the 6.2 litre V8. Horsepower and torque. 420 horsepower and 623 newton metres of torque. It's a bit of a shout out to my friends over at the straight pipes. Wait a minute. 420 horsepower from a 6.2 litre eight cylinder. My old Mercedes A45S had a two litre four cylinder with 421 horsepower. So one horsepower more than this thing. America! No. The Escalade is not only good for carrying people, it's also good for carrying all their stuff. Now I'm gonna show you the boot and to open it, you press the Cadillac badge, which looks like it was designed by the modern artist Mondrian. In case you don't know who Mondrian is, he did paintings such as this. Anyway, open sesame. This boot is cavernous. Look at that, there's so much space. There's a bit of extra storage under here as well. But if you need to carry huge things like wardrobes or maybe coffins, you can fold down these rear seats. So look, we do it electrically. Yeah, easy. No manual labor at all. Now I'll just do these two. Come on. Yeah, look at that space. I'll show you how big it is. I'm going to get in. I'll just take my shoes off, actually, so I don't mark any of the paintwork. Look, look. It's absolutely blooming massive. Huge, <laughs> isn't it? It's huge. You can put a mattress in here and use it as a shag wagon. Anyway, let's get out. Now, this is one annoying thing about this particular car. So, in certain SUVs, you can actually raise and lower the air suspension by pressing a button in the boot. So, you can lower it so it's easier to get out of, but not here. So, uh, it's a bit high. Ow. I just went over on my ankle. That brings me up to five annoying things about this car. This car is literally brand new. Look, it even has the protective cover for the infotainment display. Oh, I'm so tempted to just remove that. It'd be satisfying. Anyway, even though it's brand new, there's some scratches in this veneer already. I think this will scratch really easy. It's hard to see on camera, but I can see it with my eyes and it would drive me crazy. And in case you're wondering, Clive, that wasn't me. Seeing as we've got a 6.2 litre naturally aspirated V8 under the bonnet and the fact that the Americans don't seem so bothered about noise regs nor petrol particulate filters, this car should have an amazing exhaust note when you rev it. Go on, rev it, let's hear it. Now rev it. That's pathetic. Even though this thing is about as long as an Olympic swimming pool, it doesn't have rear wheel steering like you get on many other premium SUVs, and that might make it a bit problematic to manoeuvre. In fact, I tried to lock up the turning circle of this particular vehicle, but Cadillac don't list it. That's probably because this thing has the turning circle of your anus. Sorry, sorry, I meant Uranus. You know, the planet. Because this thing has a gas guzzling V8, is about as aerodynamic as the ever given and weighs over 2.7 tonnes, the economy isn't particularly good. So this thing has a 90 litre fuel tank, which should get you very far, shouldn't it? But not really. You see, this one has half a tank remaining and it says that the remaining range is there for 130 miles, which would mean that I'd only be able to do 260 miles on a full tank. Most car manufacturers locate the shark fin aerial somewhere towards the back of the car in the middle. Neat. But Cadillac has just plunked this one here. Maybe it's because if they had to put it all the way back there, they'd need like miles and miles of cabling to reach it. It's not all negative though. Here's five good things about this car. To make it easier to get into this tour vehicle, when you open the door, the running boards extend so you can step on them and then they go away when you shut the door. Ah, there you go. You can get the Escalade with a banging AKG stereo with 36 speakers. Look, there's even speakers in the headrest. You also have a microphone in the front, so the people in the front can have a sound link to those all the way in the back. The car's heads-up display 
features augmented reality technology. So it'll actually superimpose directions on the road ahead of you. So I'm going to show you a cutaway of what that looks like now. It's cool. If you're struggling to see things out of the rear view mirror, don't worry, you can just flick a switch on it and then you get a live camera feed from the back. So you can see things that are lower down like this. Wait a minute. Speaking of seeing things that are lower down, look at this. I've just noticed this horrible stain on my shorts. <laughs> I had that on me through the whole video. Why didn't someone tell me? As with other cars, you can get an optional fridge underneath the armrest to cool your drinks. However, this one goes as low as minus five degrees centigrade because it has a freezer mode. Though I don't know why you need a freezer in a car unless you're moonlighting, transporting organs, transplant. Okay, let's go for a drive in the Escalade. Now, I'm gonna test it in the type of environment that this car would never be driven in at all where it's built and made in the US of A because this is known as an alpine route, which I don't think they have in America, not really. We might have some canyon roads, but generally this car would be used on the highway, basically in straight lines. So this will be a bit of a weird test for it. How is it going to cope on this twisty section of test track? Is it going to be an absolute disaster? I think it may well be, but let's find out. Ooh, actually, do you know what? I thought it'd just like topple over in the bends, but it's not terrible, it really isn't. Now the old Escalade used to have old fashioned rigid axle rear suspension. This one is fully independent all the way round. It also has air suspension and you've got adaptive dampers and the car uses a camera looking forward to read the road and it can automatically adjust the stiffness of those dampers. It's not terrible, it's not brilliant, but it's better than I expected. It actually goes around corners pretty well. And over bumps, it's fine. It doesn't glide in the same way as something like a Mercedes Maybach GLS does. Speaking of which, if you want to watch my full in-depth video review of that car, take the link or follow the link in the description. But I'm more than satisfied with the way this car is going around this track. <laughs> Tell you what, the engine makes quite a lot of noise when you put your foot down and it doesn't give you all that much power, but then this is heavy, as I'm noticing now, as I'm needing to brake for this corner. Yeah, that was a bit scary, but the brakes do the job. You have to give them a bit of a prod, but they're okay. What's not so good, though, is the gearbox. So sometimes when you put your foot down, it takes ages for it to go, ooh, ooh, what, what, you want me to go quicker? Oh, okay, I'll change down the gear. And because this thing is so long, you could be left floundering at a junction. You could create like this big hazard as you're pulling out onto the main road. Oh well. But yeah, I am slightly surprised. And it's reasonably quiet in here. It's comfy enough. I've got a decent view out because I'm sitting up high, although that bonnet is, it's, it's rather long. It's more like a bow of a ship. It's huge, this thing, huge. But it certainly has some presence. Come on, that's it again. Come on, gearbox, wake up. What's the matter with you? Blimey neck. <laughs> it is a statement though, isn't it? Driving around in something this big, especially if you're in the UK. You will get attention. Will it be the right attention? I'll let you be the judge of that. There are a few more things I want to do in this Cadillac Escalade. So the first is a brake test from 60 miles an hour. Okay. When I get to 60, I'm going to do a full emergency stop. Use my specialist timing gear up here to see how far it takes to come to a complete standstill. So here we go. Let's get to 60. Here we go. Full emergency stop now. Oh, oh, oh. Oops. Let's see how far that took. 35 metres, which actually isn't too bad. Next thing to test is the acceleration. So it's time to launch it. Oh, yeah. You're going to see how quick it is from 0 to 60 miles an hour and over the standing quarter mile. Let's do it. <laughs> it's not the quickest off the line. Come on. <laughs> What's he going to do, 0 to 60? That has taken 7.75 seconds. Yeah. Come on, quarter mile. Let's be having you. 15.9 seconds. <laughs> Woo. Now, if you're interested in buying a Cadillac Escalade or any other car for that matter, you're probably going to have to sell your current car. So 
click on the pop-out banner or follow the link in the description to go to CarWow because we can help you sell your car. We'll ensure you get a fair price for it and you'll pay the price you're quoted. Oh yeah. Now, if you want to check out anything about our website, such as sell your car or even buying a car, simply Google Help Me Car Wow. My team and I will help you choose the right car for you and get it for a fair price from one of our trusted dealers. So then, what's my final verdict on the Cadillac Escalade? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should shortlist the Escalade. It's big, it's comfy, it's luxurious, and it's exclusive, especially in the UK. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like. Let me know some other American cars you'd like me to review in the comments below. Click on those windows for more videos, and on that box there for a special car wow surprise.